Hey guys, it's Taku. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today we are here with the third Summer Film Spotlight, and that is for Miss Hokusai, the 2015 film directed by Keiichi Hara. This anime film was produced by the same studio who brought us Ghost in the Shell and Haikyuu, and that is Production IG. They are great, and this movie is obviously no exception to that. It's a wonderful artistic movie about art. Miss Hokusai is severely underrated. Not a lot of people talk about it, and those that have talked about it really do enjoy it. So I hope that maybe sitting here listening to me talk about it for a couple minutes will inspire you to go and check out this great film. This interview from The Hollywood Reporter on the back of this case calls it a gorgeous small poetic wonder, and I think that's a great phrase for this movie. This movie is obviously historical, it borrows ideas from historical time, but is also based off of the manga Sarusuberi, which for our intensive purposes translates to Miss Hokusai. Now you're probably wondering, who is Hokusai? Well, Hokusai was known for his great wave, still is, he's a famed master of woodblock paintings, carvings, and all kinds of other artistic stuff. It's become an icon con of Japan at this point, and this story is about Oe, which was Hokusai's daughter. Now, Oe is also a painter, she's also an artist. She has her own angle to the craft that not a lot of people during her time were able to bring to it, but she also published a lot of her own works under his name. And I don't know how much of, you know, historical accuracy this is, but this film does have, you know, that historical edge, so I imagine that the research is probably true. But if that is, then you already know that Oe is a very incredibly talented, hardworking person. I mean, Hokusai's paintings are legendary, everyone has seen The Great Wave, and Oe of three daughters, Tetsuzo, which is um, Hokusai, has Oe to thank for kind of backing him up during a lot of his artistic career. This film is set during the Edo period, it's the 1800s in Japan. Oe is, uh, she's in the middle of her artistic years. She is trying to discover what she wants to paint, what she represents, and by doing this she often goes to the city, she crosses the bridge, and explores as much as she can. And in her explorations she comes across fellow artists, um, and all kinds of spirits, and even a dragon. Obviously the film has a lot of insight about what art means to it, the artist and what art means to other people. And during this time especially, the art of Hokusai was able to change people's lives. And so Oe, as she is kind of going through this journey of self-exploration, she is coming to find that what she lacks, Tetsuzo is very experienced in it, and also vice versa. Because, unfortunately, Tetsuzo wasn't the greatest father. And that brings us to our next point, and that is the story is also about family. Oe has a very young, sick, and blind sister named Onao, and Onao becomes a very central part of this play of this, you know, kind of work of art as the story evolves. As you watch the film, there's this very strong interplay between balancing family life and trying to also find happiness and satisfaction with the creative world. And those two, obviously, uh, if you've ever done art or ever have tried to pursue it, it's hard to get those, you know, on the same path. It's very difficult to be a successful artist, and for Oe, that is no different. It doesn't help that Tetsuzo is a very stubborn man, so uh, he lends help when he can around the house and, you know, around with other things, but if it gives you any idea into the status of their living, currently Tetsuzo lives by himself, and the rest of his family live, you know, in a nicer place. So he travels when he does his art, but also he's very kind of reclusive and sticks to himself and minds his own business. I find that when watching this movie, very few people are able to realize what all goes into the making of art. You know, you have the artists and their family and all the women who helped like Hokusai um, shape his artistic career. In that way, this film is an ode to all of the wonderful women in Hokusai's life who brought this all together. This is also though the story and the celebration of this very free-spirited woman who was overshadowed by her larger-than-life father and how she makes her own endeavors as an artist. So along with being a historical kind of documentary-ish anime film um, and also being about family life, this film is also perfect example of slice of life. As anime has also evolved, people have gotten this kind of conception that slice of life is just characters sitting around doing nothing or living a very mundane life. And I think that's, you know, far from true. I think a slice of life is just any part of a person's life, you know, kind of drawn out, showing you what it's like, and then eventually fits it back into the context, and then the story continues from then on. And that is why Miss Hokusai is perfect example of the slice of life genre, or at least it is in my opinion, because you are very much getting a slice of what life would have been like during the 1800s in the Edo period. 
so much of the movie is spent building this world of, well, I mean, a sense historical accuracy. You see all the wooden houses, you see all the visits um, that they make in the night, whether it's to go to, you know, the Japanese clubs back in the day or what would have been prostitute houses. But then you also have other aspects like visiting, you know, a play or going to other types of events. So in that regard, this film also time capsules a lot of the Edo period's kind of uh, most promising poetic aspects and bundles it together and gives it to you as a wonderful artistic gift. This film is gorgeous to watch. I very much love the soundtrack. I think it's a very eccentric soundtrack. The film opens with some rock and roll guitar, which no one would expect, but then it eventually rolls into this beautiful string ballad, uh, the main theme. I would think it was The Wind of Edo? The Winds of Edo, maybe? I also wanted to talk about the character design because I love the way that Oe looks. I love her character design. I love the thick eyebrows that she gets from her dad and then you know kind of the more feminine softer features that she gets from her mom it's just a very well balanced film and i will say that because of its slower more historical approach to things um not everyone's gonna like this movie and that's totally fine i mean it is it is a slow movie not a lot happens there is sort of a push and pull with family drama but again it's nothing explosive but if you do like something that's a bit more patient, something that reflects on art, you know, sometimes just the scenery and taking it all in, then I think you're really going to walk away with a more wonderful things to say about this film than negative things. This is a great movie for creative people. If you are, you know, kind of in a creative slump, give this movie a shot. G Kids has it all and the dub is wonderful. It's one of Erica Lindbeck's, one of my favorite performances from her as OA. And oh, if I ever got to meet her one day, I'm having her sign my Blu-ray. Oh, it's so good. Go and go check it out for yourself and definitely let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching the Summer Film Spotlight over Miss Hokusai, one of my favorite films. And hopefully I will see you next Saturday with another Spotlight film for us. Take care and till next time.